Do you want to make a Roblox logo in just a few minutes? Well, stick around until the end of the video because I'm going to show you exactly how to do it super quick and easy. So without further ado, let's get to it. First, you want to go to photop.com and it should look like this. Next thing you want to do is go to new project. We're going to be going with 1000 by 1000, which you can either type in manually or find it in here. Once you do that, click create. The first thing we're going to do is get some plugins. So go up to window, plugins, click on this first one called super bloom and click install. Go back, click on color theater and click install. And for the last one, go to pixels, free stock photos and click install. Once you do that, we're all done with these. You can click the X. First thing we're going to do is get the background. So go to this little icon right here, Pexels, and search for the photo you want to use. I'm going to be going with the medieval picture, and you guys can go with whatever you want. I'm going to go with this one, so go ahead and click it. For the size, go large, and click this button right here. Now grab this top box, drag it to the top. Grab this bottom box, drag it to the bottom. Click that check mark and you are done. Now if you click this button again, it'll get rid of that menu. Now we're going to blur the background. So go up to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. For the radius, we're going to go with 2.5. But you can go with whatever you want. Click OK. Next, we're going to go up to image, adjustments, and brightness and contrast. For the brightness, I'm going to go with negative 42. And for the contrast, I'm going to go with 0. Again, you don't have to follow exactly what I do. I'm just giving you an example and hopefully you guys can work from this video and make your own really awesome logo. Once this is done, click OK. So now the background is completely done. The next thing I'm going to do is get my sword from online. So I found it right here. I'm just going to right click on it, copy it, go back into my project and hit Control V to paste it. Now let's say your image is not PNG and you want to cut it out. Go up to select and remove BG. But since mine is already a PNG, we're good to go. So click transform controls up here. Drag this box in to make it smaller. And then I'm going to rotate this thing while holding shift. So if you hover your mouse outside the box, you can rotate it. But if you hold shift as well, it'll look like this. And then I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to try to find the center right here, which isn't exactly the center. So I had to hit that check mark and then move it again. If you want to stop selecting stuff like this every time you click on something, just uncheck that transform controls box and just hit control alt T instead every time you want to do it. Okay, so now for the fun part, we're going to start adding our text. So go to your text tool on the left side of your screen and click anywhere on your canvas. Type in the text you want. I'm going to type in medieval. Click control A. Click that check mark. Hit control alt T and scale it up. I'm going to go to about here. Use the move tool to move it around if you need to. Now let's edit our text. So double click on your text layer on the right side of your screen in the layers panel. This should pop up. This is the layer style menu. From here, we're going to go to bevel and emboss. Click on that and go in there. For the style, we're going to stick with inner bevel. For the technique, we're going to go with chisel hard. The depth, size, and soften all vary depending on how big your text is. So you might have to adjust this one. But for me personally, the depth, I'm going to go with 145. For the size, I'm going to go with 5 and soften 0. Everything else, you can leave the same or adjust if you want to. The next thing I'm going to do is check this gradient overlay box here. We're going to leave everything as is and go into the gradient color menu by clicking on this box. It should pop up. We're just going to double click on this black box here and go with a dark gray. Now you can change the color to whatever you want. We could go with a red like this, which could look pretty cool as well. But I'm just going to go with a gray to make this look like part of the sword. Click OK when you're done. And now the text is almost finished. First thing you want to do, though, is click Define New here. This will save the style to this menu right here, so you can reuse it for your next text, which we'll get to later on. Click OK. Now this is the point of no return, because once you do this, you will not be able to edit your text anymore in the sense that you can change what it says. So once you're ready, go ahead and right click on your text and convert it to a smart object. This will make it a whole individual layer that you can move around, but you cannot edit anymore. Click Ctrl Z to undo if you mess up like me. Now we're going to go up to Filter, Filter Gallery, and we're going to go with Plastic Wrap right here. But as you see, I selected the wrong layer, so we're going to exit out of that and go to your text. Make sure your text is selected. That's very important. So go up to Filter, Filter Gallery, and Plastic Wrap. I'm going to leave everything the same because I don't really need to adjust it, but if you do, feel free to do that. I'm going to click OK. And now you'll see here, it was added to my text, and now my text looks metal. 
which is pretty awesome. So now we're gonna add some more text right down here. Also, I forgot to mention the font I'm using is Indigo. So if you need to use this, go ahead and type it in here and feel free to use it. I'm gonna type in Tycoon, click that check mark, Control Alt T, and I'm going to shrink it a bit and put it right under this text. Now we're gonna edit this text. So double click on that text and go here. If you remember earlier, we saved the style. So when you click it, it should be there and it should look good. Click OK. Now right click on it point of no return so just remember that go to convert to smart object now we can go up to filter and you can click last filter and this will apply the last filter that you just did which was the plastic wrap boom that is done so now what we're going to do is we're going to get to the fun part color correction and bloom so make sure your top layer is selected and we're going to start out here with this color theater box click on that and Instead of adjusting all these and getting confused, we're just going to go with use a preset. It's personal preference. Feel free to click through them. But I'm going to go with blue medallion. This one looks really good to me. And once you're done, click finish. And that's literally all you have to do. And it's already coming together perfectly. Now, I'd recommend adjusting the opacity if you don't want it to be so strong. It'll make it more subtle. But for me, I kind of want to go all out. So I'm going to go with about... 70% opacity. Now for the next thing, we're going to go with Bloom. So this box right here should be called Lunal Graphics Super Bloom. Click on that. It should take a second to load. And this, you might have to adjust a few things. I'm just going to adjust the depth a little bit. The threshold. A little bit more. About 240 and 7. One thing I'd recommend doing is clicking this colorized box right here. Then you can go into the color and change it to whatever you want. I feel like a white is more fitting than that yellow. So now we're done and we can click add to document. Now it's on our design and we can adjust the opacity again if you don't want it to be so strong. And that's all there is to it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.